One of the most common questions when starting a new CRM such as Salesforce is where do I start? And so this video will aim to start with the basics, which is contacts and companies, the crux of every CRM database. For the most part, over the years, most of us have compiled a list of contacts that we know and deal with, whether they are prospects, clients, vendors, lenders, brokers, etc. Those contacts typically reside either on a spreadsheet or within your Outlook. So in order to get those contacts into this database, the best way would be to export those contacts out of Outlook or Gmail into a spreadsheet and do your own thorough cleansing, such as removing any potential duplicates, personal contacts, or those you don't care to find in a CRM database. After that, you can engage the admin of your Salesforce org, or if you are the admin, uh, follow some of our other videos on how to get those contacts in there. So we'll start here with the assumption that your contacts have made it into Salesforce. And so the next question is now what? We'll be able to pull up any contact here. I'll pull up a contact of Adam Collins. Clicking on his link will take us within his record. So a few things about this form right here. You can customize this depending on how you like to see the contact information. You've got the header, which typically is supposed to give you the key contact information. You've got the record itself or the details of the records. So if you wanted to add a title or a department or a birth date, if you wanted to tag this contact as a particular type, um, et cetera, you could certainly do that. This form for the most part is pretty customizable. You can add or remove fields. Again, usually the admin is responsible for doing so. At the end of the day, it will just determine on how you wanna track the information about that contact. For the most part though, this is pretty static information, not entirely changing as phone numbers, emails, and the company that the contact work for should not be constantly changing info. The activity tab will allow you to track all of the correspondence, whether it's follow-up calls, to-dos, tasks, meetings, logged emails, so that you have a, a sense within the sort of timeline of all of the correspondence that you've had with this person. If multiple people in your company happen to know this person, they could also use that same contact record and log their activities there as well so that you get a central view of all of the correspondence occurring with said contact. There are some tabs here that are Extra, I'll just skip over and jump to lists. So if you wanted to add Adam Collins to a list that you have, for example, we have a few lists here, holiday card contact list, uh, maybe a sports fan list or 40 under 40, you can create a segmented list depending on how you like to segment your contacts, whether if it's for marketing purposes or just for common interests, investment types, tenant types, etc. You could certainly create your list um, a net new list if you'd like and name it and then add that person to it or use an existing list you might have created and add that person to it. Of course, in the world of commercial real estate, though contacts are indeed people, most of the time they are connected to other things such as an asset, a property, perhaps with the relationship of an owner landlord, or maybe they are a broker that represents a tenant, perhaps they are a tenant themselves, et cetera. And so depending on your configuration of Salesforce, you'll be able to link this person or this contact with the property that they own or potentially the lease that they're part of uh, a tenant in, et cetera. If I wanted to link Adam Collins to state that he did indeed own a property, again, depending on how your quick links or your related list is set up, if you don't see properties, owner, landlord, contact, let us know, we can add it for you, or we could point in the direction of how to customize this list or this related section. In this example, we click, click on new. This would actually create a property record in addition to linking Adam as the owner. So we'll just call it Merit Tower 2. And if I scroll down, there's a lot of fields on the property record, but you'll notice right away Adam's name is pre-populated because we created this property record from within the contact record and now they're linked. So if I click on save, you'll notice now as we hover over, there's the property I've just created. Everything is hyperlinkable. So when I click to Merit Tower 2, his name is listed here. That's what makes it a relational database. But to begin with, you'll just want to make sure within your contacts, the information is properly populated, uh, is correct, is the most up-to-date, logging your activities. And then there are some other extra things you can do. For example, when we click on the contacts tab, you can determine what columns you want to show up. So last activity is an interesting one because it will show you who you've recently reached out to, again, depending on the activities you've been adding to the record, perhaps who's stale, who you need to follow up with. You can also create multiple filters. So for example, if you wanted to just look at your broker contacts, this will just pull up those that 
have a uh, within their record probably a contact type of broker okay and be able to just really back to the segmenting conversation this is different than the lists feature and that this is based on just how you want to group them by data criteria again so if if this list is called my prospects and we can assume that the contact type is a prospect so you can create lists from within there uh, or rather views these lists are more subjective so you can say I just want to add uh, this person to my a clients and perhaps I want to add them as a baseball fan as well so the distinction between these lists is that they're subjective versus um, these views as they call them which are more filtered views and they're filtered based on being able to use this funnel on the far right that allows you to say all contacts with the contact type equals broker. That's what drives the data you see before you. I won't delve too far into the rest of the tabs up here. Companies, just because it's closely linked to contacts, is really another way of saying organizations, um, companies, accounts, they're all sort of synonymous. This is really mostly a company that could be connected to a contact by virtue of that it's a brokerage firm, again, vendor, lender, um, ownership ent entity, et cetera. And so you may go into a company record. It will also have its own field centric to it. It will have an activity timeline whereby you can log activities to the company. It also has the ability, if you notice here on the far right, to be able to log the multiple people or add multiple people that are at this company. So that if I have a fifth contact I'd like to add to this company called Arden Equity, I would create a new contact. And again, they would be linked to Arden. Because of how this demo is set up, we could see that Arden is also a buyer for two sale comps, and perhaps they are a client for five ongoing deals. And again, lots of this is just depending on the configuration of what you'd like to surface and show up when you do look at a company record. What information do you want to glean at a quick glance to be able to determine not just the company info, where they're located, their phone number, but also what other records they're connected to and how you can surface that information pretty quickly to be able to make decisions just as quick. So that's a brief, brief overview of how to get started getting your data in and working within the contacts and the companies in order to start reusing the rest of the database.